In this presentation, we will work a problem with a change of estimate for depreciation. Here's going to be our data up top. We're going to enter this data into our worksheet here for depreciation and then the depreciation after the change in estimate. Then record the book value for each year that will be affected using our worksheet here. Our data up top says, Original data says that we had a cost of 50,000, salvage value 1,000, useful life three years. We're going to use a straight line method for this presentation. In uh, our change of data, we have the useful life at the beginning of year three, meaning we had a change after the second year. We thought first off that it was only going to last three years. And then after year two, because this is just an estimate, quite possible that it could come to light that we believe it's going to last longer than that or shorter than that, whatever the estimate may be. What we will not, well, that's going to be the change here. So we have the change here after year two. It's going to have a useful life of four years after year two, the salvage value only being, however, 500 rather than the original 1,000. We're going to enter that data into our depreciation down here. We'll start off with the original straight line. We'll do this relatively quick because straight line is going to be the standard format, and then we'll deal with that change of estimate. So a straight line, we're going to start off with the cost. That started out to be 50000 That's not going to change, of course, because that's not an estimate. That's what we're actually paying. And then we have the salvage value, and that's going to be 1000 1000 that's given up here. And we will subtract that out, and that will give us the amount to be depreciated. And we're going to say that that equals in B15, this 50000 minus this 1,000, or B13 minus B14, giving us 49,000. Then we'll divide that by the useful life, useful life, which we said originally was three years. Three years, scrolling back up to the data, three years. That's where we, where we are picking that up from. Then we'll do our division problem, and we will come to the depreciation per year. If I spell some of this wrong, I apologize for that. So we're going to divide this out. We got the 49,000 to be depreciated. Three years of depreciation. We will then divide that out. This equals the 49,000 divided by three years. B5 divided by B or B15 divided by B16. So that gives us our 16,333. This could be rounded, so just note that there is rounding involved here. We're going to round to the nearest dollar. If you want to check rounding, you go to the home tab. Uh, numbers and increase in denting, it's really 3.333, uh, 16,333.3333. So I'm going to take off the decimals. Then we're going to do our um, calculation up top for the book value. And so remember, whenever you're calculating depreciation, uh, it's often the case when we first learn it that we, we get to this depreciation per year and we're like, okay, we got the answer, that's it. But notice that uh, any book problem can, can give you ever any other uh, component of depreciation, including the accumulated depreciation or the book value. So we need to know how to get those as well. So we've got the cost, which is going to be the 50,000. We've got the depreciation, accumulated depreciation, which will be the accumulation of depreciation over its useful life. This only being the first year, therefore, we only have one year of depreciation, which equals that 16,333. If we subtract this out, then we say that this equals the 50,000 minus the 16,333, providing us with the 33,667. That is, of course, rounded as well. So because this is a straight line, uh, year two is going to be the same. Uh, well, the same cost, of course. Cost doesn't change. Accumulated depreciation will um, be increased by the same amount, meaning we had in the prior year equals this 16,333 in the prior year, plus we've got another 16,333 for the current year depreciation, giving us a total that didn't add. Let's do that one more time. This equals this prior year's accumulated depreciation plus the current year's depreciation for year two, giving us 32,667. We can then subtract that out, finding the book value at the end of year two by saying equals this 50,000 minus the 32,667, giving 17,333. 
Now, we're not going to keep doing that because we thought it had a three-year useful life, and if we were to go to three years, it would take the, uh, the book value down to the salvage amount. But this, of course, is the area where we now are saying there's a change in estimate. So we now want to account for that change in estimate. Now note what we will not do is we're not going to say, okay, there's a change in estimate. Typically, we're not going to go back in time and refigure out the prior years. The prior years have already happened, and therefore what we're going to do is, is fix things from this point forward. That will usually be the case uh, when we make a change in estimate in something like, uh, in this case, both the salvage value and the useful life. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, I'm not going to go back. If we do go back, and part of the reasoning for that is that these depreciation amounts in year one and two have already closed out to retained earnings. The books are basically closed. So to go back and restate those financial statements uh, might not be the, the best option. It might not be worth our time to do that. It might be best at this point to say, okay, we recognize that there's a change in estimate at this time and make that change happen from this time forward. So in order to do that, what we're going to say, okay, I need to take the book value as of now. We're not going to take the cost. We'll take the book value as of it is as of the end of year two, and then we'll apply the new changes to it using the same type of straight line or whatever depreciation method, in our case, straight line uh, depreciation calculation. So I'm going to go back over here. We're going to say that now this is, is not the cost, but it's the book value. Uh, at year two and at the end of year two this is the book value and that equals what we have in our worksheet over here that's where we're at at this time in terms of book value and then we're going to subtract out the salvage value now we're just going to apply the same type of formula we're going to subtract out the salvage which now has changed once again uh, it was 1000 now it's 500 so we're going to subtract out the salvage of 500 and then we'll subtract those out, and that'll be the amount to be amount to be depreciated. So this equals seventeen thousand three hundred thirty-three minus five hundred, or sixteen thousand eight hundred and thirty-three. And then we're going to divide that by the useful life as of this point in time. The useful life. The useful life. And that's going to be. 404 the useful life is four and uh, now we're going to take the uh, depreciation per year for the rest of the remaining life of the uh, depreciable property per year dividing this out so this is the amount to be depreciated this is the number of years we're going to say this equals this 16,833 divided by four years giving us 4,208 so this then is going to be our new number that we're going to depreciate for the rest of the time period. We have four more years, uh, years three, four, five, and six. So we're going to say, of course, the cost will remain the same. And the uh, accumulated depreciation, same calculation, last year's accumulated depreciation, where we stood in terms of the accumulated depreciation as of the end of year two, plus, let's get the plus this time, not missed that as we did last time, as I did last time, and then pick up the new depreciation per year. New depreciation per year, 4,208. There we have it. And then we can subtract this out. The book value as of year three equals this 50,000 minus the 36,875, giving 13,125. Same thing for year four. This equals the 50 still. And we could uh, copy this formula if we use absolute references just to show you um, what we'd want to do is, is this cell we'd want to change, F13, to G13, so we wouldn't do anything to that. This cell, we want to stay the same. This cell, we don't want it to move to uh, column C. So if I wanted to copy it across, I can absolute reference it by saying F4, and that puts a dollar sign before, before the B and the, and the 24. We could use a mixed reference is all we need, but I'll use an absolute, absolute reference, won't hurt. So we're going to say OK, and then if I copy that across, it'll do what we think it should do. It takes that cell and that cell. I'm going to, I'm going to do it uh, just uh, manually, uh, just so that we can see it. So we're going to say this equals this uh, prior year's accumulated depreciation plus, and then we'll pick up the current year's 
uh, depreciation expense, 4208 And then, of course, we can subtract this out once again, equaling the 50000 cost minus the accumulated depreciation as of year four, book value going down to 8917 Let's do this a couple more times. This equals the 50000 We're going to say the accumulated depreciation equals the prior year's accumulated depreciation plus the current depreciation expense, which is the same because it's straight line. That gives us our accumulated depreciation. Then we'll subtract this out. We've got the 50,000 minus the 45,292, giving us the 4,708. One more time, then we have to stop because this is the last one and it's a, it's a shame. So we're going to take that 50,000 and then we're going to get the accumulated depreciation, which will equal the 45,292 accumulated depreciation for the prior year. And then we'll pick up the 4,208 current year depreciation expense. That given us the accumulated depreciation for year six, 49,500. If we subtract this out, then we get the 50,000 minus the 49,500, which should bring us to 500. That's the salvage value. So that's kind of our check figure. If you're able to do the whole problem, it's nice to do so because then we have the check figure and we can say, oh, did it stop the where, where we wanted it to? 500, yes. Now, if we don't have any salvage value, which could be the case in, in a lot of uh, actual depreciation problems, then of course it would stop at zero. <laughs> but if we have a salvage value, it should stop at the salvage. We will not depreciate any longer because that's the salvage. That's what we can sell it for. That's what we think basically we can scrap the um, machinery and equipment for at the end of its useful life.